everybody. Uh, welcome to our last pixelr.com tutorial on how to create a building in two-point perspective. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to add color perspective and some details. Um, I don't want to take too much time getting started, but just know this is probably going to be the longest part of the project for you as it involves highlighting and meticulous detail work, like in the erasing and um, zooming in, zooming out, make sure you got it right, that kind of thing. Okay, so where we left off, we have this building form we created in two-point perspective. Then we learned how to add a street and a walkway, and we added some doors and windows, and now we're going to add color. To do that, we're going to choose the lasso tool, and then we're going to choose the polygonal lasso tool. Um, it looks like a pointy lasso. Um, with this tool, you can highlight with straight lines. You click at each point. You do not have to hold it down when you move the cursor. And then... Um, just like the regular lasso and your highlight back where you started and you'll have we're gonna first we're gonna do the sky so we're gonna highlight all around the building and up and over and down okay and next we'll select the gradient tool so that'll be this slide um, but let's do our highlighting first let's see um, so we're gonna pick this polygonal lasso tool we'll click on the end here and I'm gonna overlap some of these lines so I can like cover up the break colors that we use. Um, I'm going to come in here and just I'm clicking at every point. So I'll click at this point and then it'll like tie a knot there so to speak and then I can move it somewhere else. So every time I click it'll hold it in place. I'm not holding down the mouse button when I do this. And then I'm going to come all the way over to the edge here. Oops, did not click in place. Then come up. And I'm going to try and get as close to the corner as I can. And then come over here. And click. And down. Back to where we started. Okay, so now, if we go back to the slide here, we're going to choose the gradient tool. It looks like this little blue value scale. Um, after you choose it, you can go to the color at the top and customize. So I'm going to pick probably this same blue. And then if you click on the little crayon shapes with the colors in them, you can choose new colors. You can also slide them to change the way the colors blend. Those are here and here, and I'll show you. So back to Chrome. So we click on this tool, which is our gradient tool, and then we can click up here. Um, and we can pick whatever kind of color we want our sky to be. Let's see. Um, like, just for, you know demonstration purposes, I'm going to choose this blue. Now we can, we can, I thought there was a way to add more crayons in here, maybe not, but um, I know in Photoshop you can add more crayons, but anyway, if you click this, oops, you should be able to change the color, oh, color here, you click on here, so if I changed it to this, you know, then it would, you know, I can change it any color I want, but I'm just going to say cancel for now, and then if you slide these crayons over, you can change how the gradient interacts. So, you know, if you want it like deeper blue or whatever, you can you can slide those around. And I thought there was a way, um, like I said, to add more crayons in here, but maybe not. So I guess if you want more crayons, it's best to just start with a different one, like here. Now this one comes with three, so now you can change any one of these. So I could change this color by choosing the crayon and then picking the color. Um, same thing here. And then you pick the color, and then you can change it. Um, so anyway, but back to the blue. So we're just going to go with that. Now you can you can have a linear gradient or a radial one. So you can play around with those features, but um, I'm going to choose the linear. And then what you're going to do, after you have all your options selected, you're going to start at the top of your frame, click, and drag it down. And you'll see like this little cross shape and this little line will come down. And then when you let go, it'll add the color for you. And you can just drag it over everything. So you start up at the top, drag it here, and then you have your sky. It's just that easy. Now, if you do it this way, oops, now I could drag it this way, and then you'll see what happens. So, but that doesn't kind of look right with the way the sky usually goes, so I want to make sure I go up and down. And then the radial will give you a different effect. It'll start from the center out. See? So, I mean, like, if you wanted to create a rainbow or something, you could play around with that. Um, but we're going to go back to linear, and we're going to start at the top and drag it down to the horizon line here. 
and then we have a nice looking blue sky. So then um, we can do the same thing if we go to edit and deselect all. Now we're going to highlight again. Make sure we have the polygonal tool. And we can do the same thing with the ground. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to show you how to add a highlighted area. And I'm going to come down here and click all around this building. So this is just going to take me a minute. But I'm clicking at every point. I'm not holding and dragging. And I'm going to come on the inside here first. And then I'll show you how to add the outside all at the same time. Oops, don't want to do that. So like that, I guess. Oops, there we go. Now, if I hold, I think it's, is it shift? Okay, if I hold shift down, do you see what happens? Okay, I'm holding shift and letting go. See that little plus? Every time I hold shift down, I can see the plus. So now I'm going to start here, and this will add a highlighted area to the thing I already highlighted. But I have to hold shift down the whole time. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to highlight both sections at the same time. I like doing this. I do this a lot when I do Photoshop stuff. So. Because sometimes I want to make changes to different areas of the picture, but I'll make the same change. So anyway, then when we get back to where we started, we can let go of shift and let go of the mouse. So now I have this area highlighted and this area highlighted. That's pretty cool. So watch what we can do with that. Uh-oh, I see I have a little gap here. So I'm going to hit shift again. Okay. All right. Now, so we have all that highlighted. And I'm going to take the gradient tool again, click up here, and I'm going to make it green. So I'm just going to pick this and make it a grass color. That looks good. And then if I don't want this to go totally white, I can make this a shade of green too. Maybe like that. There. So now it's not so white. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is click out of that. And then I'm just going to start at the top and drag it. Let's see which way do I want to do this. I think I want to start at the bottom and drag it up this time to get the right shading. There we go. So it's darker down here, and you can see how the grass gets lighter as it goes back. That creates color perspective. The more you approach the horizon line, the lighter the color should get. And... Sometimes in painting, they'll say they'll get a little more blue looking too. Um, so just so you know. So if I just deselect all of that, and then, you know, I can get in here and like, you know, get rid of that red line totally. You'll probably use like, I'm assuming like black or just like one color to do your building so you don't have all these brassy colors showing up. But, um, you know, I could, I could go back and make sure I got that exactly perfect. But for demonstration purposes, um, we're just going to move ahead. And then... Um, because if you were using this tool, you could zoom in here, you know, and I can make sure I get really close then. Um, so, again, with this tool, we're going to color the building now. And this gets a little more hashtag complicated. So, because we have to, like, 86 the windows here, that means cut, cut the windows and the door out so to speak. We got to leave the windows and the door out of our highlight to just get the building. So I'm going to click around all this and then I'll show you how to I'll show you how to minus something in a highlight. So we learned how to hold down shift and add to a highlight. Now we'll learn how to get rid of something in a highlight. Um, I think it's control. If I hold control down, see the minus button? So if I hold control now, I can go around this window and then the window will not be highlighted anymore. And that's important if we want to do this background all at once with our color perspective on the building. So you've learned some extra highlighting techniques today. So now you should be able to pretty much do anything you can think of. But anyway, so I'm holding down control and I'm clicking. I'm not holding the mouse down. I just click it and release it at the points. So there's that, and I got the door out, and now I'm going to do these two windows. 
that's the easiest way to do it is just highlight everything and then hold the control button down and go back and unhighlight things because I tried it the other way and selecting the inverse and all that and it just was I mean you could probably do it that way but it would this is just simpler okay I'm kind of off a little bit in the corner here but I'm not gonna worry about it for now um so anyway, we select this gradient tool, and if I go back to my demo here, okay, we did this sky, so you can see how the sky dropped down, and we talked about the options where you can change the colors, and then we talked about adding highlighted areas, um, and then we can do the same thing with the street, too. Um, I don't think in that example I had the street on there, but you could highlight the street and use, like, the gray to white faded gradient tool, and you could you know, highlight both sides of the street at the same time and get that to color in. And then, um, let's see, then I colored the building. I kind of went out of order here. I added some people and things first. And then to finish it off, I colored the building here, and then I added some clouds. So we'll get to that. Um, but that's where we're going. So now if we choose this and we, I think I just used this because um, it, it looked like a nice brick kind of color. I tried to open an image of bricks and then copy it on here, but the thing is, it since this is on an angle, I couldn't just copy it on there. Like, the lines of the bricks had to be going the same way, so I think if you wanted to do that, you'd probably almost have to draw the brick pattern on here, you know, in perspective. So I don't know. I would just go with this, because it'll color it nice and simply for you. So let me just drag this down. And we have this all shaded. And then what I did was, let's see, I went to edit, deselect all. And I think in this one, what I did was I highlighted just this side of the building. And then I did a color enhancement to make it lighter so it looked like the sun was coming from this side. So let me go back to Google Chrome here. And I'll show you how I did that. So then I just went in here and I highlighted from here down. I can just outcrop this door right now. So then I just highlighted this side and I'm going to show you how to make it lighter or darker or whatever. Now I could do that with a color gradient. I could like lighten the colors in my color gradient or I could do this. Adjustment and then I went to probably levels. And then I slid the light one over and that'll make all those colors a little bit lighter. Let's see. I can do it that way or I could go to adjust brightness contrast. I could do that too and just brighten that up a little bit. So now let's see, select, edit, select, deselect. Okay. So now we have you know, this just looks a little brighter on this side, and I could darken that up if I wanted to. But um, anyway, let's zoom out for now. And um, so now it's looking pretty good. I'll show you how I did the clouds on there, and then we'll add some things. Um, I went to paintbrush. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, I think I picked a different kind of brush, maybe. Well, maybe I didn't. I think um, to do the clouds, all I did was I got white in my color palette. <clears throat> and then I picked one of these. It might have been this one. Yeah. I used this. Um, and then I think I took the opacity down at first, too, so I could layer that up a little bit. And then, see, if I don't have this building highlighted and I do this, it'll, like, go over the building. So what I think I did was, actually, is I put this on a different layer. So, let me go back. Oh. I put the clouds on another layer. So I went new layer, and we'll call this clouds. And I'll show you how this can be helpful. Because now, if I go over my building a little bit here with these clouds, and I just make them like this. And then how I got it to look more realistic is, okay, see, with the opacity down, you know, it's looking pretty good. But then if I if I go back over the same area, now it's starting to get a little more opaque in that area. So I can kind of build up the layer so it looks a little more realistic. You know, it's like the clouds are fading in the distance a little bit. Um, you know, and the more you layer that up, 
you just kind of play around with that. But see, if I go for my building like that, what I can do is erase. And then, you know, I can go back in there and highlight that. So it erases right in there. But then it looks like the clouds are kind of behind the building. Oops, if I don't, if I erase it right. Um, so that's an easy way to, to work around that. That's why layers are nice. 